Yo, what's up? Am I a YouTuber if I don't say what's up, guys? The answer is no. Find out more next week. We're in it today. We are doing some cool tutorial. Today, we are going to shake up your world with this freeze frame video effect. I know you've seen this effect in memes, viral videos, vlogs. Mr. Beast uses it, so you know it's good. A lot of people like to pair it with a glitch effect, and today we are going to show you how to do it in two very simple ways. And you might learn some extra stuff. Let's hop into Adobe Premiere Pro. This is all gonna start with a clip of your choice. The footage quality doesn't really matter. You can shoot it on an iPhone or a DSLR camera. Here we have a clip and we have chosen this clip in this exact moment because something dramatic has either just occurred or is about to occur. And we're just gonna really like emphasize the drama in the frame by freezing it. We'll like scale in, move it around a bit, shake it up because it is cool. But more importantly, it's easy. So the clip that we're gonna be using today is my friend Riley absolutely killing it during Frank Walker's set at Ultra Music Festival this year. As you can see, this is a very dramatic moment where she jumps, throws her hands up in the air, and then the CO2 goes off beautifully in unison. What we want to do is find the exact frame right before all the excitement happens. Theoretically, the proper way to do this is to click on this little camera button we have right under the frame that you are editing. If you can't see this camera button, that just means we have to go to our button editor tool, which is this plus sign. Click on that, find our camera, and then we just drag it down here. You can save this very moment that is in frame with your cursor or playhead, or whatever you wanna call it, and we can save it as a JPEG. Name it whatever you want. Let's just name this screen grab freeze one, and it's going to be a JPEG photo. And we're gonna click browse over here. We're gonna throw it into our assets folder. Organization is key when doing effects like these because we are going to have to look after this photo. If you're like me and you change computers often while editing, this is going to be a problem. If you need some help organizing, you can check out my video on that. But for here, we're just gonna save it into our assets. This lovely button right here is going to save us a bunch of time. Now we don't have to hunt for our photo. As soon as we hit okay, it is going to appear right here in our project. Once we bring our photo into our timeline, let's make sure we drag it to the exact frame that we cut out. Now that it's in your timeline, trim this photo to the appropriate length for your dramatic scene. By default, when you drag a photo into Premiere Pro, it is going to be five seconds long. I think that's a little bit too long, so I'm just gonna trim the one I have here. We are going to cut our clip exactly where we took the screenshot so that it flows naturally into this photo. Whoa, boom, everything will return back to normal after the photo is done playing. Let's make this a dramatic zoom effect. What we wanna do is set a keyframe here for our scale and our position, and we're going to scale this photo up and then reposition it to our subject. After that, we can hit our reset button so that the photo scales back to its normal size before returning to our video clip. And check that out, super easy. Now, let's just increase the drama a little bit by extending our freeze frame. Ooh, and that's essentially it. Boom, done. But what if I told you there was a faster way? Well, you would probably ask why I was wasting your time showing you the first way. But now you know how to export a frame in Premiere, so you are welcome for that, okay? It is super handy if you don't wanna try and like perfectly trim your screenshot to match the photo that you know you might have left at a quarter resolution. It just looks better, it makes more sense export frames that way. And I also had to do it because I know someone was gonna comment being like, you know there's a freeze frame button, right? I don't know why those people even watch these videos if they already know what they're doing, So, but they they like to do it and they like to comment. So uh, I just, I'm just showing you both ways. Anyways, what I typically do instead of exporting the frame because I'm lazy and I like to be really quick is I'm just gonna cut out that one frame that I want, hit Command R and I'm gonna retime it I would highly suggest that you click the ripple edit button because it's just gonna push the rest of your timeline down. You're welcome if you didn't know that existed before. Now we have a ton of time to work with. Essentially what you're doing is turning this one frame into a couple hundred frames. We're only gonna use probably like a second maximum. So we can just ripple delete the rest of this and it's right there. That's it, like I said, it takes virtually no time. You know, we didn't have to export it, name it, and babysit this file to make sure that we have it all the time. All you had to do was just simply retime it and then quickly adjust. So yeah, just like that, we have a frozen frame in our timeline and we can pretty much do whatever we want with it. 
So we can do the exact same thing. Just go in, scale in a bit. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. And it's the exact same thing, just a little bit faster. So just stick around if you want to see a few examples of how we use this effect. Okay, so I have a clip from here of my friend Ollie. He is laughing way too hard at Frank's joke. And I just find this to be like a really fun, raw, authentic moment. And I just want to make fun of him a little bit for it. His laugh is just so genuine and the look on his face is absolutely priceless. Look at that. But what happens is I look away too quickly with the camera to get Frank's reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to freeze the frame here and have a little bit of fun. Again, we're just going to retime 1% ripple edit. Sweet. We're gonna trim that in. And what I really wanna do with this one is show you how to naturally flow it into the clip before and after. This is our photo. We wanna set our ins and outs. I'm gonna set this in to start a bit punched in. I'm gonna keep our subject in the center. And I'm gonna drag this out. And then I'm gonna scale it up a bit more. And I'm gonna drag that to the very end. So this is kind of like our starting point and our ending point. We still wanna do a dramatic zoom on this. So let's do that. Zoom into his face and reposition it. Now, to make this more natural, what we're going to do is we're going to select these keyframes and copy them. We're going to go to the scene right before it, set some keyframes, and then we hit paste. So that's going to perfectly line up with these keyframes. As you can see, it's a fluid movement. We're gonna drag this out to create that dramatic pause. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. Set our keyframes, copy our out keyframes from the photo, and we're gonna paste them right at the beginning of the clip. And it just flows a lot more natural. Now let's have some fun with this. <laughs> a second example is a high intensity shake. All right, so let's do this insanely dramatic over the top shake effect. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take my alien friend who is being held hostage at this nightclub, we're gonna send a very dramatic message to the audience saying that he needs help. I like this frame right here, so let's do our thing. In terms of scaling, what we wanna do is lock off our scaling early. So we're just gonna copy that and paste it right here. We can even start with the same position. To create this really frantic shake, what we have to do is just reposition it a bunch of times before we zoom out again. The closer you put the keyframes to each other, the more intense it's gonna feel. So we're just gonna like, we're just gonna load it up with like a bunch. We have a few frames here to play with. Let's go in two frames, click on motion. When you hit motion, you can see where your frame is by that blue line. So we're just gonna choose a bunch of different frames that kind of just throw him all over the place. So then he'll return to normal and then zoom out again. Let's see how that turned out. So as you can see, it's kind of like an earthquake and that's exactly what we wanted. That is it for this effect. Thanks for watching. If that was helpful, hit subscribe because we're gonna do a full series on just these little effects that make a big difference in your videos. And see you next time. Next week, we're gonna do a tutorial on how to live forever.